Want to know how to use the new AI blocks added to Space Engineers and use them to build all kinds of drones and missiles? Then sit back and relax as we go through all of the AI blocks and how to use them so you can become a master of building your automated allies. There are five AI blocks as of recording, plus an additional very useful block called the Event Controller. Here you can see that I've built a little drone that has thrusters in all direction, a gyroscope and power, and as we go through each AI block and explain their features and their functions, I'll be then adding them to this drone in order to demonstrate how they can be set up and used. So let's have a look at the first of the AI blocks. The AI Flight Move is an AI block that you'll need on pretty much all of your drones, as it is what controls the movement of the drone. Once you've placed it down, you'll be able to see the settings of it, and as you can see on the right-hand side, if there's any problems with it, it will show you in red on the right-hand side. Now this one has a lot of errors on it, as I've placed it on a static grid with no thrusters, so obviously it's not going to work, as this grid can't fly, but I'm going to ignore these for now and I'll show you it on a drone later. The AI behavior option here is what toggles the AI behavior on. So if you want to toggle the AI behavior on and off from your hotbar, you'd add this option to it. And you can see you can toggle collision avoidance on and off, potentially useful for missiles. Now there's four options at the bottom here. The speed limit obviously dictates the speed limit that your drone can move. So by default, it's 10 meters per second. It can go to a maximum of 100 meters per second and a minimum of zero meters per second. The next option is aligned to P gravity, which basically means when you're within a gravity field, i.e. on a planet, the drone will stay upright relative to gravity. It's also worth noting that the AI move flight has orientation. So this is the front of it and it has an L on the side. So this is the left side Then you have the back and then you have the right hand side. So obviously you want to orientate this the way you want your drone to face. Minimum altitude also only works within gravity, and this is how low you want the drone to fly to the ground. Obviously, depending on the size and shape of the drone, you don't want it to fly too close to the ground in case it hits it, but in other circumstances, you might not care about this as much. And the final two options are max pitch angle and max roll angle. And you probably don't need to mess with these options unless you haven't built enough thrusters in all directions. These settings control the maximum angles your ship can rotate to, but as long as you have enough thrust to keep you upright in all directions, these options shouldn't matter. So let's place our AI flight move on our testing drone, making sure it's facing the right way around and then configure it. Right, first we want to toggle on AI behavior on. Collision avoidance obviously on, on by default, as we don't really want our drone crashing into anything yet. Position mode we'll leave off for now, and we'll come to the main options, which is the speed limit, the altitude, aligned to P gravity, and the pitch and roll. Speed limit, I'm going to set it to 50 for now and will increase and decrease depending on how stable our drone is. Minimum altitude, I'm going to set this drone to follow me later, so I want it to follow quite close to the ground. So I'm going to set it to quite a low value. If you see where the slide is, it's quite difficult to get a value. If you control click, you can manually set the value. So I'm going to set this to one meter for now, which is roughly half my engineer's height. We'll see how that goes and we'll change it if we need to. Obviously, the collision avoidance will kick in anyway if it does get too close to anything and we'll push it back up. So it won't matter too much if this is too low to the ground. Align to P gravity, we want on, so our drone sticks up the right way. And as I said earlier, we won't need to mess around with the max pitch angle and the max roll angle, as those are only really relevant if you don't have enough thrust in all directions. And I know for a fact, as I've tested it, that this thing has enough thrust to keep itself upright in all orientations. Right, that's the move AI configured. But before our drone can actually do anything, we'll need the next AI block. As I said, it takes two AI blocks to build a flying drone. So the next one you're probably going to need is the AI basic task, which is indicated by this globe symbol here. And if you go into the terminal for it, you can see once again, it has toggle AI behavior on and off. So if you didn't want this specific task active, you could toggle that off. And by default, it's on follow player. So you can see it's got the follow me button. So if I click that, this grid, if it could move, would follow me. And you've got the distance. I can demo this with this cargo drone I've created here, which is set to follow me at all times and follow me as close as possible. As you can see, as I've set it to fly as close as possible, it might rub against the ground a little bit. If I turn around, it will now turn around to face me. And I can always access the storage it has on board. The other options are follow home and autopilot. Follow home allows you to select a list of homes for it to have. So these range from static grids to other ships to waypoints. So if I were to create a new marker over here and call it home, if I paste back in my cargo drone, set it to follow home and set it's home to home, you can see that now it's trying to get to its home point here. Now I think because it's close to a block, it's struggling as it's trying to avoid the block it's going into. Yep, now it's going underneath to get as close to home as possible. You can see now that it's got a new home, it's going for that instead. As I said, home doesn't have to just be a waypoint or a static grid. You can see that the starting atmospheric miner is here, which means you can have ships following other ships with this. And at the bottom, as you can see, you can set the minimum range it can be from home and the maximum range it can be from home. So if you wanted it to be closer or further away, you wanted to fly around idly around the home base, that's how you do it. For example, you have your fighters flying around your carrier and you have a minimum range it can go from the carrier and then a maximum range it can go from the carrier. 
So let's place down our AI basic task on our drone and configure it to follow me. I'm not going to toggle on the AI behavior yet, as I don't want it to move while I configure it. Actually, what would be a good idea is I grabbed a button panel, like the button on the front, and then configured that to toggle the AI behavior on and off. There you go. You can see it changing when I press the button. We're going to set it to a very basic task to follow player. So we've got follow player selected. I'm going to click follow me. I'm going to set the follow distance to one meter again by control clicking to set the value. And then I'm going to come out and press the button. And it appears we don't have enough power on our drone. Let me just fix that. There you go. That's the power issue sorted. And now our drone is going to follow us around. And then I can press the button on the front of it. Oh, it does get very close. Toggle the AI behavior off. And then I can configure the next AI block. However, before I do that, I think there's something missing from this drone. There you go. That's much better. I've increased the follow distance to three meters, so it flies slightly further away and isn't right up in my face all the time. And I've got to be honest, I feel like I've created some sleep paralysis demon to follow me around. It's absolutely terrifying with that smiley face on it. I feel like this needs some like horror music playing behind us. This thing stalks me around. Hello. Anyway, next AI block. The next AI block is the AI recorder task. And this one's a bit more complicated than all the other AI blocks. So it might be easy if we just get straight in and place this on the drone and I'll explain how it works. So like the AI flight move, you can see that this block has orientation. So you want to make sure that the F or front is placed facing the front of your drone in order to make sure it has the correct orientation. I'm also going to grab an antenna to place on my drone. I'll place it here, there you go. And the reason we need that is if you go into the terminal, go into info, and you can see you've got this option here, toggle AI functions. I want to toggle that on. And then if I go back to control panel, go to my AI recorder. I've got show on HUD here. And if I scroll down to the bottom, I've got show path on HUD. So the reason we've done this is because the AI recorder, as the name suggests, can be used to record paths and tasks. And the reason we want to show it on the HUD is so that we can visualize the path we've created. So I'm going to place the cockpit down on my drone just so I can control it briefly. Although I will need to turn off my AI behavior on my flight so I can control it. There you go. I want to get my AI recorder on my hotbar and the function I want is add waypoint. Now, if we go back to the terminal for the AI recorder, you can see that the add waypoint button is here. However, you can see you've also got the record option. This means you can click record and then fly along a path and it will record your position on that path every 1.7 seconds. Now, this is the lowest it can go. As you can see, I'm dragging it. It can't go any lower. If I set it to zero, you can see it says the amount needs to be between 1.7 ish and 30. So you want a very precise path. We want to place all the waypoints down manually. So let's create some waypoints. So I fly away from the base and then I'm going to press one here to add my waypoint. And you can see it's added onto my HUD as we toggled on the AI functions in my terminal and on the AI recorder itself. So we fly forward a little bit. I'm going to get roughly above where my connector is and press it again You can see we've got our path. So we've got waypoint zero over here. And if I fly back over here, I have waypoint one inside our drone. If you go into our terminal, go back to our AI recorder, you'll be able to see waypoint zero and one are here. So now if I toggle my AI behavior on for my AI flight move and then press play, you should see that my drone will now follow the path. So you can see it's got to point zero and now I should turn around and fly to point one. And when it gets there, it should stop. And as with all other things pertaining to the terminal, you can add the play option to your hotbar. So at the press of a button, you can toggle the play on for the AI recorder, and then it will fly to the points that you've specified. Now, that's just the basics of it. You can do things that are much more complicated. If you go back to our AI recorder, go right down, and let's delete all waypoints. And then we're going to create some new waypoints. Let's have point number one right above our connector. So I've just added the waypoint. You can see if I go down, waypoint zero is now there. I'm going to keep going down. Actually, I'm going to get out and place a connector on the bottom of my drone as so then keep going down. And then I'm going to place my next waypoint right above the connector. So you can see there and then I'm going to go down the position where I can lock to the connector, place my next one so that you can see we've got a zero above us, one there and two there. And then I'm going to fly away because I don't need this anymore. Let's go to our control panel, go to AI recorder. And then if you click on waypoint two, which as we know is the waypoint on the connector, you can see we've got setup action. So here we want to go to our connector and we want to switch lock. So it will lock the connector when we get there. And then you can see after waypoint two, we now have switch lock. So if we now play our task, it should now go up to zero, which is good. And it should fly down to one. Perfect. And then fly down to two and lock. There you go. That worked much better than I expected it was going to. Now, the possibilities of the AI recorder are pretty much endless, as you can basically program it to do whatever you want. So as you can see, I use this to make a docking sequence. I've seen people use this to make mining drones, and I've seen this used by people to make AI rovers. So the possibilities of it are pretty much endless. The last thing I should probably mention about the AI recorder is that you have the option to repeat the task so that it will keep cycling through all these waypoints. You have the option to reverse order. So if I press reverse order now, you'll see that it goes in the opposite direction. And you can see because I reversed it and it was already enabled, it disconnected from the connector as that was the first thing in its list and then flew to the waypoints in order, which is the last waypoint of being up here. So if I now reverse it again, it should now fly back down and dock. 
There you go. Ah, a little bit of an angle, but better than I could do in that time. And then finally, you can see it's got reference beacon. So currently we're docking to a base, which is obviously a static location. It's never going to move. Well, hopefully it won't anyway. So the waypoints that it's going to are static ones. However, if this was a ship, you would place a beacon on your ship, set the reference waypoint to the beacon, and then each of these waypoints would be relative to the position of the ship. So if your ship was moving and you set your AI to dock, it would then know to dock where the connector is on the ship as the waypoint would be following that connector rather than being in a static location in space. The AI Defensive Combat is one of two Combat AI blocks added in this update, and this one, being more defensive than the one we will cover later, serves more of a utility purpose. I'm actually using one of my cargo drone here, and I'll show you why now, as the Defensive AI has a flee option here. So you can see when I hover over it, it gives you a list of when to flee. By default, it's never, so it will fight the target when it gets to it. Always means that if it detects an enemy within 2,500 meters, it will run away to whatever the waypoint is set to here. So if I get to my drone here, I go defensive and say it's home to home. You see I've got a hostile ship incoming. In a second, it should go, oh no, there's a hostile ship incoming. There you go, now it's detected it and it's flying away. Bye bye. So it should fly all the way back to the base. And you can see here, it's made it back to the base and it now considers it safe. There's another really useful feature of the AI defensive block, and that's the automatic targeting lock feature. Whilst this is useful to help you automatically get target locks on hostile ships, its main interaction comes with the artillery and assault cannon. The built-in AI on the turret versions of these blocks has a maximum range of 800 meters. However, both these weapons have an effective range of 1,400 meters. If you have target lock on something, if your weapons are in range, they will override the 800 meter AI range and fire on the target, effectively doubling the range of these weapons. This is more useful for things like bases where you aren't manually targeting ships, but it's still a very useful feature nonetheless. Also, I've just had a thought, does this work with custom turret controllers as well? They have a maximum range of 800 meters, so can you use this to make an automatic railgun turret that fires at 2000 meters? I'll tell you what, why don't you guys try it and let me know if it works. Anyway, I won't be placing an AI defensive combat on my test drone, as there's a much more interesting combat AI I'd like to place on it. The AI offensive combat is the final AI block available to us, and as you can imagine, it is used for offensive combat. Now this one has a lot more options than any of the other AI blocks so far, and that's for good reason, because this one has a lot to do. As always, it has the ability to toggle the AI behavior on and off. You can choose it to target enemies or enemies and neutrals. You can choose it to target players. You can choose its targeting priority, whether it be the closest, the largest, or the smallest. You can select how often it chooses new targets. So if you wanted to check for new targets every five seconds, you can. You can choose which subsystems it targets. And then you have the most interesting options, the attack patterns. Those being circle and orbit, stay at range, hit and run, and intercept. Each of these come with their own options below, so let's look through each of them. Circle and Orbit is the one I've tested the most, and this is where the ship will stay at a certain range, and it will fly around the target in a circle in that range and fire at it. Now, if you're in gravity, you want to select this option here, which means that it stays in a circle within gravity, and then you can choose which weapons it has. Using this option here, Facing Mode, it will then face the direction of static weapons. You can change this option here to choose the manual facing priority and choose it to face front, or if you want to do a broadside, you can choose it to face to the left or the right, and that way it will point whatever side of the ship towards wherever the target is. Now we also have stay at range, which is very similar, whereas the ship will try and stay at a certain range from the target and then will attack them at the target. So if you want to use Gatling guns, for example, you might want to set the minimum range to like 700 meters and the maximum to 800. And then it will always stay at the maximum range of the Gatling guns. Or even if you have weapons that are longer range than Gatling guns, you could set it out of the range of Gatling guns and then the ship will stay at that range, attacking the enemy target. And if they have Gatling guns, they just won't be able to hit you. There's also the option for evasive maneuvers, something I haven't tested personally, but it sounds very useful for dodging things like rockets. Next, you have hit and run, which was shown off on a teaser a couple of months ago. And this is basically your fighter hit and run tactics where it flies towards the target. And then when it gets a certain distance, it then breaks off and flies away, turns around and then flies back in. You can choose the distance that it breaks off, you can choose the distance it retreats to, you can choose how long it is before the next retreat, and you can choose the angle it retreats at. Once again, you can assign the weapons it has, and this attack pattern is very useful, building things like fighters where it flies in, gets a couple of shots off and then flies away. Finally, the attack pattern you're probably most interested in is intercept. Intercept is quite simply the attack pattern for missiles. All this attack pattern does is fly towards your target and crash into them. At the bottom, it has the option to override collision avoidance, which overrides a setting on the AI move blocks that try to avoid hitting things. You also have two different types of targeting, basic and target prediction. Basic just points your missile towards your target at all times and then flies directly towards it. However, target prediction will try and predict where your target is moving and then intercept it, moving to where it thinks it will be rather than where it actually is. 
So, now that we know how they work, let's upgrade our drone into both a fighter using the hit and run tactic, and then a missile using the intercept tactic. Right, let's start by converting our drone into a combat drone. First of all, let's place our combat AI on our grid. Let's get some weapons. I'm thinking auto cannons. As we're in creative, we don't need to pipe these into anything. So just put three down there. Perfectly acceptable. And there is one other change we quickly need to make. There you go. Perfect. Now he's an angry drone. Let's go to our terminal, search for our offensive combat AI. So we want us to target enemies. There's no other characters in the world, so there's no point setting that up. I'm going to set the target priority to closest, and then I'm going to set it to switch targets every five seconds. Specifically, because when we use this, we're going to go to the drone base that spawns on the easy earth start, and that will spawn additional drones. So we want it to attack whatever's closest to it, and then switch every five seconds. I'm going to leave the targeting subsystems on default. I'm going to set our attack pattern to hit and run, as that's the fighter attack pattern. We're going to set the break off distance to, so we say 400 meters, as that's half the range of the assault cannons. Retreat difference, we're going to leave on default at 1,000 meters. Retreat timeout. I'm going to leave that as default. And retreat angle, we'll leave it 90, as that means it should kind of fly over the target. But we'll see. We can tweak this later. We'll select our three auto cannons and add them as weapons. And there you go. That's pretty much set up. In the distance, you can see the Space Pirate facility I mentioned earlier. And you can see it's just spawned in a drone. So when we get into range of it, which is 2,500 meters, I will spawn in our drone and we'll begin combat. There you go. I've pasted in our combat drone and he's clearly flying away from something. So because he's on hit and run, he's trying to get out of range of the drone. And now he's finally at the maximum range. And now he should fly in for an attack run. There you go. He's flying away again. Might reconfigure the AI to be a little bit more aggressive. He's going in for another attack run. And he gets within 400 meters and now he turns around. Wow, this is absolutely riveting. <laughs> That drone can't hit me because it's only got a weapon below it. And this thing can't seem to do enough damage to that thing to actually defeat it. Come on, you can do it, I believe. <gasps> it broke the engine off. It finally did it. Yay, we did it. Oh, I won't tell you how long that took. Right, I've built a very nice looking and resource efficient missile to test. And if I go over to the control panel, I go to my AI blocks. I've gone to the AI flight move on it. Obviously, I've got AI behavior on. I've got toggle collision avoidance off. It is overridden by the setting here on the AI offensive combat when you have its attack pattern set to intercept. But I figured it can't hurt to have it off in both places. I've also set the speed limit to 100 meters a second. As it's a missile, I want it to be going fast. The minimum altitude, I don't want it near the ground, but it's not really going to make any difference if it is. And I turned off a line to P gravity. As it's a missile, I want it to point towards the target, not to stay in line with gravity. My AI offensive combat, because it's a missile and it's got a very sneaky surprise inside, I've set this targeting priority to largest. And because once this is launched, it's probably not coming back. I don't really want it to be reselecting a target. So I've set it the maximum targeting time so that it won't try and switch target. Once it's fired, it will just pick a target and fly towards it. I don't really mind what it hits. So I've set threatening subsystem to default. Obviously, the attack pattern is intercept because it's a missile. And I've set the guidance type to basic as our target, as you'll see in a minute, is a static base. So we won't need to be predicting where it's going to move because it won't. So let's take a copy of our missile and let's fly over to our lovely base over here. So you can see it's there. It's 1.28 kilometers away from me. And a little friend has come over to greet us. I'm going to paste in our missile and he should acquire a target. He should begin flying towards it. He seems to be right dead on target. Oh, missile getting shot. Come on, you can do it, I believe. Oh, <laughs> I didn't quite see it, but it definitely hit his target. Right, let's paste in a few more. And there you go. They did a nice bit of damage. I'm sure with a bit of refinement, I could make a much more effective missile with lots more explosives. But in principle, they work. And now you too can build a missile. Just build a better one than I did. Whilst I won't be going in depth on the usage of the event controller and the sensor, we'll be saving those for future videos. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see that. I want to bring up these two blocks here as they both pair well with the other AI blocks. Both of these blocks can trigger actions based on conditions and you could use them to trigger changes in the AI's behavior. For example, the event controller can trigger an action based on the level of hydrogen in the tank or the amount of charge in a battery. So you could use the event controller to detect when you're about to run out of fuel or charge and then trigger our AI recorder to perform the docking sequence we recorded earlier. For a basic example of using the sensor, one of the things I find annoying about the drones is that they continue to move about when you're trying to access them, especially if they're on follow as they keep getting closer and closer to you. So what you could do is you could place a sensor on your drone, make it detect when there's a friendly player nearby, and then you could either change or disable the AI behavior so you're able to interact with them. Or you could just make a remote control for them and make those changes remotely. But you know, that seems too easy. The AI blocks themselves are fairly simple to use, but in order to master their usage and build the best drones possible, you need to be automating their actions using the event controller and sensor. With all that in mind, what kinds of AI drones will you be building using the AI blocks? Let me know with a comment below. And as always, like and subscribe for more Space Engineers content. 
A special thanks to The Wildcat, Splurge Burger, Quirty the Pro Gregor, Atheki, Somit, Tarantula Fudge, Pascal, Roland Red Sky, and Death Valley Dave. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the links in the description to become a member or Patreon, or you can like this video and subscribe to this channel for more Space Engineers content.